little while back, YouTuber Slazo had his ex-girlfriend Shay come out against him, accusing him of being emotionally manipulative and abusive and also sexually inappropriate throughout their relationship. Slazo has been mostly silent on these accusations other than a single statement he gave to Keemstar for drama alert in some direct messages. Shay, on the other hand, actually put out a second statement, and in both of her statements included lots of screenshots of conversations between the two of them. But last night, Slazo finally responded with a half hour response video called My Side. My name is Rag Reynolds and welcome back to Medium Rare. Today, we are going to break down what is going on with Slazo and whether or not he has cleared his name or made things worse for himself. And I'll just tell you right off the bat, I've watched through Slazo's video and I believe he is being genuine. I believe the things he is saying in the video and I think a lot of what Shay has done and put out has been out of context as he implies in his video. Now I don't think all of his actions are excused 100% and I will get to what I believe is not excusable and what I believe Slazo has managed to clear up. So the first thing Slazo addresses in his video is the fact that it took him a while to get his response out there because a lot of people were wondering why is it taking Slazo so long to respond. Some people were even thinking that Slazo might not respond. The situation to a lot of people looked unwinnable for Slazo. It looked like he was condemned. The evidence provided was just so condemning. But he explains that he didn't want to just straight away react and have one of those crying breakdown videos as we've seen many YouTubers do before. And he also wasn't actually quite sure how to respond because from his point of view, a lot of the things being said were blatantly false. Um, some of you might be wondering why it took so long to make this response. That's mainly because I wanted a good but belated re um, response. I didn't want a terrible, crying, you know, early apology. And a lot of the things being said are just blatantly untrue, and when I first saw them, I wasn't sure how to respond. It took me a while to recoup from this and think about how to go forward. Slazo then goes on to talk about Shay's claim that she didn't want to do anything sexual until she was 16. And Slazo brings in some evidence to show that this isn't the case at all. In fact, Shay specifically wants to do stuff before she's 16. Shay made this twit longer about me and about her grievances with our relationship. So basically, at the beginning, she states that she had intentions to wait until 16 before doing anything. Um, I never got this impression. She never said this to me. She never implied it. Um, in fact, very early on in a Skype call, she said to me, Nobody needs to know when I asked her if she wanted to wait to do anything. But I do have plenty of evidence from very early on in the relationship where she clearly made no intention to wait until 16. He then goes on to explain the awkward encounter that the two of them had in the cinema on their first date. In Shay's version of events, she says that Slazo had essentially pressured her into doing things in the cinema when she wasn't comfortable with it and that she had never even kissed someone before. Slazo, however, in his video comes out with some evidence where you can see quite clearly it was she who was the one who brought up the idea of doing something in the cinema. Next she goes on to describe our first date where she says, Michael on our first date touched me in a cinema despite me never kissing someone before. I assumed this was normal, although I was uncomfortable by it and let it happen. And now this confused me when I read it at first because it's not really how it happened. In fact, she was actually the one who brought up the entire idea of doing anything in the cinema. It was her idea and I had no reason to believe she wasn't as in on this as I was. And then also still on the topic of this same first date in the cinema where Shay said that she had never even kissed someone before, Slazo makes it clear that that was not what he thought. And he even says that Shay once told him a story about how she kissed a girlfriend in front of some religious preacher who was preaching against gay marriage. That she mentions in this bit that she's never kissed someone before. This confused me because that's not the impression I had. Um, in fact, when we were walking around the streets of Sydney while we were dating, we passed by like a Woolworths or something and she told me a story from what happened outside that Woolworths once where she and an ex-girlfriend of hers kissed in front of some religious guy preaching about gay marriage. Slazo then brings out more receipts and says that Shay's claim that she had never been in a relationship before was just untrue. Also mentions later in the post that she's never been in a relationship before. This isn't the impression that I was under. I was under the impression from these screenshots here 
that she's had at least two boyfriends and one girlfriend before we ever met. Now the next thing Slazzo covered is a bit more he said, she said, but he starts covering the situation that she spoke about, about when they were in a park and she says she was crying and he moved her hand to touch him. Well Slazzo's version of events is that she wasn't crying, this isn't what happened, and that she actually touched him of her own free will. He then shows some screenshots that show that she seems to have been into it a bit, and these screenshots are from a private conversation. In this next bit of her statement, Che says that I, I got touchy-feely in a park and I was making unwanted advances while she was crying and asking me to stop and that I moved her hands to touch myself. This makes me sound like a monster and if it did happen, I would be a monster. But this isn't how it happened. What did happen was this was a very awkward but mutual situation um, where she describes I moved her hands to touch me she did that of her own volition, and she even mentions this in Discord messages from after we met up in person. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why she would lie about that. And the way she talks about what happened at that park is is very different from how she says it publicly. Um, she is, is very much on board with it, with the messages from the time where it actually happened. And the way she talks about it then is very different from the way she talks about it in hindsight. I had absolutely no reason to suspect that she didn't want what was happening or that she wasn't on board with it. Slazzo then goes on to address what a lot of people's biggest concern was with all this, and that was some of these statements where he said, when I get home it's you know what time? And he addresses this by saying that these were jokes. Now I believe them anyway. I, when I first read these, I thought, okay, these are distasteful. They're not very funny. But to me, I thought they clearly were jokes. And Slazo does apologize for those jokes. These are jokes, <laughs> not good jokes, not acceptable jokes, not appropriate jokes, not funny jokes. And honestly, they're probably gonna haunt me until the day I die. They are pro probably the worst messages ever sent by, by man but they are jokes. Obviously in hindsight, it's not very funny and it's not appropriate. If you told me that these made her uncomfortable, I would be inclined to believe you. And over the course of this relationship, there are pl 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 plenty of things that I do regret. Slazzo then addresses the fact that she was trying to show the evidence by scrolling down Discord on a screen recording on her phone to prove that she wasn't faking these screenshots. But Slazzo is quite adamant that she is trying to push a narrative that all of the conversations they had seemed to be quite effed up. He says she's trying to push this narrative to make it look as though the conversations they had and that the relationship was more toxic than it actually was. And he says the proof of this is when she gets to a certain point in the scrolling up Discord, she suddenly stops and starts swiping the other way again. And that's because that was where she was going to get to the point where he was trying to see her point of view and he was apologizing to her. In the video where she's scrolling through her messages here to prove that they're real, she also goes nearly up to where I apologize and try to understand her point of view but then quickly scrolls down. I feel like this is worth mentioning because she says that these were the kind of conversations we would have, despite cutting out all the good bits and only including the absolute dodgiest things I say. Next, we get to the point of the video where I can't quite follow Slazo, I can't quite approve, even though he's trying to justify. Everything else in this video, I think he's very genuine, I believe him 100%, and I think we should all forgive and move on from all these other things. But this specific thing that he's about to go on to talk about, well, I'm not so sure I can quite get behind him here. And next we have these messages. I understand how bad they look. They look terrible. But just know, just right off the bat, that I would have and will never force myself on somebody who doesn't want it. That That's not who I am. It's disgusting. And I would never do it. Even the version of myself who sent these messages would never do it. Uh, what you see in these really embarrassing messages is me trying to articulate how badly I wanted it at the time. Um, not very well, I didn't have any filter, and I should have thought about what I said be before I said it. I can understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say that he was so sex crazed, he was just a teenager, hormones raging through him, and he didn't know any better way to try and explain how much he wanted to have sex. So he said, I could just force myself on you, and he makes statements like that. I can understand how he's saying, I want to force myself on you. I understand the figure of speech. He's saying he didn't mean it literally. And if that was the only statement and that's all this was, then I'd be 100% believing him here. I'd be 100% accepting what he's saying. However, it's not quite as simple as that 
because there was another screenshot, there was more to this conversation where he actually asked, what if I did force myself on you? What if I couldn't help it? Because I don't think I can help it. There was a whole section of this conversation that he hasn't addressed where, where he specifically didn't just say, I want to force myself on you. He actually said, what if I do it? And they had a whole conversation where he was trying to justify forcing himself on her. And I, I think there's a tremendous difference between these two things. He's addressing just the fact that he's saying, I want to, and I can understand that because it's him just saying he's so sexually frustrated and that's how he feels. And that's just a figure of speech. He doesn't actually mean it. But when he starts going on to justify it and say, well, how would you feel if I did force myself on you? And then it's almost like he's trying to manipulate her into saying, it's okay if you force yourself onto me. When it comes to this bit of the conversation that he didn't address, I'm still very disturbed by that. And maybe this is an unpopular opinion, I don't know, because most people, since his video was posted, seem to be forgiving him 100%. And I, for the most part, do agree that a lot of these things have been taken out of context and that she clearly had some malicious intent with the things she was saying. She was being quite devious. I certainly believe that. But when it comes to certain things, such as this that I'm now talking about with this screenshot, I'm showing you again here, this screenshot, when he starts specifically talking about, what if I did do it? I just, I can't be on board with that. And I don't see what the explanation is. That isn't just pent up sexual frustration. That isn't him just not expressing himself well. I, I, I don't see it as that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I, as I say, maybe I've just got an unpopular opinion here. But I don't see how this can translate into just sexual frustration. But I would be open to hearing him clarify that. Slaza then goes on to say, that he wasn't a great boyfriend, he was emotionally inconsiderate, he was unavailable, and that he's tried his best to make up for all this. I, I was a massive, inconsiderate, emotionally unavailable dick. I, I didn't think about things that I said to Che a lot of the time and how they made her feel, and I'm I'm really sorry about that. I acknowledge it, and I've tried my best to make up for it. Slazo then does a very nice thing where he asks his viewers specifically not to go and uh, attack Che. He makes this quite a big thing and he says that he actually thinks that she is deserving of sympathy. He actually thinks that she may actually believe the thing she's saying has been twisted maybe in her head and now it's worse than it seemed at the time. I also ask that nobody go and attack Che regardless of what you think of this whole situation. Um, I, I wouldn't put anyone through that. She is someone to feel sorry for here, you know. Um, I have no doubt that her pain is real. Maybe the things that she said she believes because she's thought back in the relationship and it's become a bigger and badder monster than it was. And the final thing I'm covering from his video is the fact that Slazo says he is now going to go on a social media hiatus. And he also says that he is seeing a counsellor to help him move past this situation. So yeah, what's next? I'm, I'm going to be taking a much needed social media break, um, a, a hiatus to get myself back in order. I'm, I'm seeing some counseling to, to help me with this whole situation and also make sure that I'm on the right track moving forward. So I think there's a couple of things missing from Slazo's overall video, apology, response, his side to things. The number one thing would be what I mentioned earlier about uh, after the force myself on your comment, he said, what if I would do it? And I, I was quite annoyed that he didn't address the what if I would do it, because to me, that was a far bigger deal than the initial I want to force myself on your comment. I also don't remember anything from his video addressing the fact that Shay said he wouldn't visit when she was on her period, for example. A lot of people in these situations often take silence as a confirmation. So if he hasn't refuted a certain thing, a lot of people are going to look at that as okay, well, this must be true. And that's why a lot of people, myself included, thought Slazo was guilty of pretty much everything Shay said. And that's because he hadn't said anything for a while, and when he finally did and he said stuff to Keemstar, all he said was that some of the things Shay said were completely untrue. He didn't say that most, he didn't say that all, he said some of the things are untrue, and I've apologised for these. So it seemed as though he was coming at this with a guilty conscience. And the fact that he kept saying, I've tried to apologise, I've tried to apologise, I don't know what I can do to make this right, that coupled with some silence on a lot of these issues made him look very guilty. I must say, even though he didn't specifically address that period thing, he did say throughout the video that he was not a great boyfriend, he was quite controlling, he was emotionally just not there and he was unavailable and all this other stuff. So I suppose in a way that is him sort of admitting fault for those things. But yes, overall I think Slazo 
has cleared his name for the most part. There are a couple of things that, as I've said, I do think he could have cleared up a little bit better, and I would still like to hear what he has to say about those things. But for the most part, Slazo is on cancelled party. I think so. I think so. Anyway, that's just what I think about all this. Let me know what you think in those comments down below. And until next time, this was Medium Rare. My name is Rag Reynolds, and you're welcome, society. There is a man called Rag Reynolds. He has one head.